I love cooking because it's in my bones. Being a chef is like to be an artist. Being a chef is being able to be immersed into something. Being in an environment where you can create. When I think about food, I think about love. I want to transmit the love that I have for cooking to the people. I've been working at this my whole life. This is my path. This is where I want to go. This is the time that I need to excel myself and teach the world what I've learned. I know that this will change my life. I feel it. I have no idea what I'm getting into. All I have here are my knives and my apron. I started in this industry the day after my 15th birthday. My father said, by law, you're able to work. So I found a job as a dishwasher at a local small restaurant. We all seem to look out for each other. Right now, I'm a sous chef at Le Spalier in Boston, one of the top restaurants in the city. I spend 80 hours a week in the restaurant, but I believe there's a goal at the end of the road. My father was an electrician, had his own business. He says, if you're gonna do something, you do it well, or don't do it at all. One of my biggest goals is to have my own kitchen and to be able to lead a brigade. I've worked for this my whole life. Coming from those blue collar roots and getting to the position I'm at now is very important. This is my path, this is where I want to go. Cooking is a part of my family's lives. My parents have always owned a Chinese restaurant. My father was the cook in the kitchen and my mother was the host. As I got older, I discovered that cooking was a passion of mine. 21 years old and I came out of culinary school and this love that I thought that I had for food became more than a love, it became my life. And then I injured my hand. And it was a very bad injury and the doctor told me that I may never have any type of movement, but I was very stubborn, so I started baking and mobility started coming back. I haven't been in a full-service kitchen for quite some time, but I want to have an effect on people, so I just have to get out there and push myself. When I was eight years old, I went to the kitchen and I helped the maid prepare the food. And my mom, she was like, what are you doing? You will burn yourself. Now, my mom is always complaining why I don't cook for her. <laughs> when I was 15 years old, my dad passed away. I have to rethink all my life and to think that you have to do what you love because life is really short. I study in college culinary hotel management. Right now, I'm the chef of the Korean Embassy. I cook for diplomatic events, and sometimes the president of Costa Rica. I want to have my own TV show, my cooking show, to transmit my passion of food to the people. I love what I do. Well, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, chefs. Uh, welcome to Las Vegas and welcome to Fleur, to my restaurant. To have Hubert Keller as a mentor is amazing. He's won a James Beard Award, and his restaurants have been culinary institutions for over 25 years. And then, of course, you recognize my dear friend and fellow chef, also Susan Finnegan. 
Hi, everyone. Hi. Susan Feniger is incredible. Her restaurant, Border Grill, changed the landscape for Mexican cuisine in the U.S. And she and her partner, Mary Sue Milliken, hosted the show Two Hot Tamales, which ran for years. Why don't we sit down and I prepare the, one of my latest uh, creation. Is this your guys' first time yes. in Vegas? Yes. Yes, it is. yes. All the chefs I know, they want to be in Vegas. Everybody wants to be here, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, true. Yeah. it's, true. it's, it's true. amazing. So now the competition is fierce on the strip. So I think that's going to also reflect a little bit on your challenges. We Cheers. talked a lot, but let's try what I created here. This tastes amazing. Mm. Sauce Make sure you clear. taste it really well. A lot we will be doing with you is to plan and prepare a meal in high volume restaurant. And along the way, two of you will be eliminated. But the person who rises to the top will be given a chance to create a three course special menu right here at Fleur. The whole idea is that actually people will choose your menu above my menu. Just now another little challenge. That is a challenge. Yes. <laughs> I followed Chef Keller through most of my career. So it's pretty incredible to have the chance to take over his kitchen for a night. Mm. We just ate an entree with 25 ingredients. For the first challenge, each of you will have 10 minutes to search in my kitchen and bring back the ingredients that made that entree. We have eaten. Your challenge basically starts right now, or has begun. Michael, you're the first one to get started. Yes, chef. Time begins yes, now. I just had a few bites. There's a lot of different flavor profiles going on in there. Protein shelf, protein shelf. The dish that I tasted was a braised protein, either beef or pork. Pork butt. Okay, come back for that. Behind you, coming down. Shooting for 70% of the ingredients, which might be a little uh, tough. There wasn't even anything in there that was that direction. Show me a short rib. Show me a short rib. No, not far gone. I'll take it. Corner. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Wow. Got the butter. I can see a restaurant chef like Michael, but at the same time, the nervousness, everything was like, oh my God. And he missed key ingredients. You ready to go? You wear yeah. your running shoes? Or... Let's do it. Go, chef. The dish reminded me of something that I've had before at a local Asian restaurant. Oh, where is that truffle oil? The truffle oil was very dominant for me, and I could taste the mushrooms, which paired really well with the truffles. Okay, I need to count what I have, because I think I have a ton of stuff. Done. I finished early, but I think I, I gathered the key components for the dish. With Sally, she picked a lot of ingredients like walnut oil and things that in this cuisine probably didn't make a ton of sense. Are you nervous, will you? A little bit. Well, you're on right now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Go. I want to remember what I tasted. I have like these, these flavors in my mouth. So I want to keep it in my mouth, in my mind, and that's the first thing I'm going to grab. I know the panko and the garlic and the butter and the meat, and maybe bones, because you have to, for making a brown sauce, you have to have bones. And I think that I'm going to grab things with my hands, my pockets, I don't know if I can put things in my underwear. <laughs>